good morning guys and uh, thanks for taking the time out of your studies and i'm sure you have been doing a lot of it but uh, obviously after studies there's something more important uh, to implement all of that and that's where we are uh, coming to have a discussion and understand what exactly we are trying to do uh, especially uh, it was a good leeway into what the professor said uh, into what Reliance is trying to do. And uh, my, myself, I'm uh, Amish Lakhani. Uh, I have been uh, at uh, Reliance for three years. Uh, and prior to that, uh, I was uh, <coughs> at uh, Texas Instruments in US for about 14, 15 years. Uh, I have a master's in electro electrical engineering. I have an MBA in finance. And uh, all these years I have been on the technology as well as on the leading front trying to make something new out of it. Uh, myself, uh, uh, along with me joining is uh, Rohit Karagri. So he would introduce himself uh, when he'll get on board here. So what we are trying to do here, uh, so obviously everyone has uh, heard about Geo. Uh, is anyone here who has not heard about Geo? Okay, good. Oh, there are many. So, uh, Geo is uh, Reliance uh, new venture. Uh, I'm sure everyone has heard about Reliance. Okay. So, Reliance Geo is uh, the, the new telecom venture under the flagship Reliance Industries, led by our chairman, uh, Mukesh Ambani. And uh, the charter is to basically uh, create a new digital life for India. Uh, whether you call it in digital India, whether you call it in, uh, in, in all the aspects, basically. Uh, there, he wants to make sure that uh, each and every individual sat, uh, uh, whether it is uh, in the rulers, of India or whether in an urban India needs to be connected and have a true digital life experience. To do that, uh, he has uh, a grand vision. Basically, we have been lay laying out uh, uh, the largest ever uh, backbone, MPLS uh, backbone, and voice over LTE distribution, which is a 4G rollout for the world. Uh, just to put things in perspective, we have uh, more than two and a half kilometers, uh, k kilometers of fiber laid out. Uh, this is just a snapshot of it. Things are rolling as 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 we as we speak. Uh, there's a lot of. Uh, um, we have more than 200 million LTE subscribers. We actually more than uh, 500 k thousands. So there was an employee launch that happened earlier uh, in. Uh, 2015 and the end of 2015 and uh, we have more than half a million of customer base who are actually on the LT backbone on the voice over LT networks on an average we have been using around uh, I would say uh, 15 to 20 GB per month is, is the average user consumption uh, at an uh, bandwidth of about uh, 20 meg uh, down and about 4 to 5 meg up. So this has been a radical change. In, and the coverage is uh, phenomenal. Like I have taken it uh, uh, across India in, uh, uh, in, I would say, Calcutta, Bangalore, Goa, like interiors of Gujarat, Bhavnagar, uh, in uh, Punjab, a lot of other places in, in the basements and in, in the in the far end into the deserts and still we get the connectivity out. So that's that's the main focus. So once the connectivity is reached out, what exactly is the goal? The goal is to basically try and make use of all this bandwidth, right? And the various ways to make use of the bandwidth uh, is, and one of the main area is basically either education, health, uh, entertainment, you can, you can name it and there will be various applications, various uh, usage models where people can make anything out of uh, the actual bandwidth. So one of the areas that we would like to concentrate and what we are here for is uh, education. 
So what's the primary uh, issue where, where India is uh, having challenges? And uh, to the lead way into what uh, the professor said earlier, we want to break the barriers of how the traditional classroom style teaching is all happening all around. You want to get into the leapfrog into the next way of how the, the, the education is going to get delivered uh, to yourself, to your uh, kids, and so on and so forth. So one of the primary challenges that we have, obviously there's shortage of teachers, quality teachers, and the way the education is delivered. So uh, we want to address some of those spaces, challenges in <coughs> employability. So there's, on an average, any engineering graduate who tries to comes out uh, getting into education uh, teaching is, is very limited. Uh, limited access to institutes, uh, obviously premium institutes, you are lucky enough to get into uh, the premium institutes of uh, India. But to expand this uh, access is what lack of government funding and uh, rising cost of education. Uh, you, you can vouch for, your, uh, I'm sure your parents can vouch for that. <laughs> and uh, our outdated curriculums and lack of industry linkages. So trying to address all the spectrums is what uh, we are all about. So our objective is to create a so-called uh, an educational system which will revolutionize the, by use of virtual classrooms where the students and the teachers will actually interact, will have uh, uh, completely no barriers on the walls as, as he was mentioning earlier. Like if we want to break the walls, we want to try and have the interaction going, have the students mingle around to try and make uh, the group's uh, discussions more active, try to make sure the assessments uh, uh, and trying to make sure uh, how people collaborate to try and get the most out of this education. That's what else we are trying to achieve. So uh, there's a lot of market opportunities. You can call it with us an in-house uh, uh, after class. So you want to do it uh, within the classroom. There are endless uh, opportunities. There are some numbers out here. I will not go through the numbers. But uh, primarily, it's all about uh, having connected education to make sure that we get the best out of it and to, to, to increase the longevity in a way. What will be the offering looking like? So it will have the premium contents. It will be whether, uh, and it's all going to be cloud-based. Obviously, you want to make it anytime, anywhere, so that people can access it all the time. Uh, there will be virtual classroom, there's, there's a remote classroom sessions uh, where, as again, breaking the barriers and trying to have available quality teachers all the time. Uh, there will obviously uh, be various assessments, skill developments happening. Uh, assessments can also be at, uh, at uh, the individual school level, at the national level, that could be. Uh, and while the assessments are gone, through, you can have various analytics run on the back end to try and collect uh, the areas of focus on where you want to be uh, and make sure you improve and we try and make sure that you are directed and you know your areas of weakness. So that's how analytics is going to play a role. And accessibility is through coverage, uh, cloud coverage and uh, having a large scale uh, deployment. So one good thing at Reliance is always uh, we dream big and we achieve it to that levels. So, well, and one of the classic example being uh, the Jamnagar refinery by itself. Okay, so let me call upon Rohit. Morning everyone. So, um, just following up on uh, his question. Um, technically, we've already launched to about uh, over 100,000 people. Now, these are employees plus the families and relatives of employees, because each employee has been given up to five SIM cards. Uh, now, the purpose of this launch is basically to test the field, test the waters, right, um, of the, the real 4G business that Geo is getting into. But uh, as Amish said, Geo and the 4G and the broadband is not the end of it all. Um, Reliance Geo wants to really rev revolutionize the way um, bandwidth and network is used. Uh, of course, it's going to be really cheap, just like 15, 20 years ago, when the monsoon hangama reliance communications cdma phones came out this is also going to re revolutionize and you know disrupt the market but what are you going to do with such high bandwidth right and uh, the chairman pretty easily found out long ago that video is 
and you know heavy duty me media is going to be the maximum consumed uh, type of re resource in the net. So around this, um, the chairman thought, you know, let's give a lot of apps to the users, which is going to make the bandwidth utilization more effective and more productive. People will have something to do with that bandwidth. Um, so we have apps like Video On Demand. We have apps like Live TV on your phone. So uh, Amish has an app. Even I have an app on my phone, which I can just start and watch TV live, 300 ch channels, while I'm on the go. <clears throat> uh, similarly, you can listen to music. But these are all the, you know, the entertainment media. There are also two really serious top of the priority items uh, in the chairman's mind. One is education and healthcare. These two started off as CSR initiatives. But uh, soon uh, it was realized that you know, these are not just CSR. This has to be provided to the country because the population is so huge. Uh, so if you, basically, if you listen to Professor's last five minutes of his talk before we stepped in, if you had heard it carefully, that is the problem we are trying to solve, right? Uh, which is connecting students across the country virtually to really good quality teachers. As he said, not hundreds of teachers, maybe one, two good quality ones. That one teacher can actually reach out to not just maybe 200 students in this class, but um, thousands of thousands of students across the country. So this concept um, which you see here, I was just standing there and kind of visualizing this classroom getting into a you know a virtual classroom. So if you look at these boxes, these tiles around, right? If you just convert them into these televisions, and professor stands here, and I can see a lot of empty chairs. Probably those chairs are empty because these are the number of audiences uh, expected. But those empty chairs could be filled virtually. You could have probably connected 10 times the number or your number across the country and then explain this program to all of the students. And that could have been converted into you know, a virtual classroom. So, uh, but all this is possible when, you, when you basically have really high speed connectivity. When you're transferring these huge chunks of streams of bytes across the network, you know, heavy, heavy duty video, you need high speed connectivity. And once the 4G basically gets in, and when you have average speeds of 25 to 30 Mbps on your, sim, on your mobile phone, it's basically a problem which is solved, connectivity. What is really remaining to be solved is how do you make the platform really strong and secure, and scalable, and really effective. And it should basically solve the purpose of uh, delivering high quality education, of, even by, by not being in an IIT Bombay. So. Um, our project, uh, basically, which is called geoeducation, a very, very general term, uh, tries to solve this you know, problem by having two kinds of ideas or platforms you know, combined together into one synchronous uh, platform. One is uh, a MOOC-style uh, platform. Uh, so if, if you've heard of Coursera, you know, have you probably must have taken some courses on Coursera, Udemy, Udacity, right? These are all the Microsofts of the world, you know, the proprietary closed source platforms. But then there is open edX, then there is um, you know, uh, open source platforms. So we believe that um, by leveraging these open source platforms at a really great scale, massive scale, backed by a very flexible, scalable, elastic cloud infrastructure that we have running in our data centers, um, we can basically solve that problem of you know, providing this platform to masses. But that's not enough. We are not just giving a recorded offline version of um, of a MOOC platform where people can sign up for a course and then take it up on a scheduled time. We're also combining um, one of the world's best video conferencing systems in this. So uh, if professor wants to actually schedule a live lecture you know, on, on this platform, he can, he can do so. He, he'll say, OK, 15th of May, I'm going to talk about XYZ. And uh, you all can register. The platform can scale, basically, to, to a lot, basically, to a big number. Of course, it's bound by the limitations of how we deploy the video conferencing system and how we de deploy the open edX platform. But uh, it's really meant to scale a lot. But that's where we have you know, those challenging problems to solve. So our technology team is kind of having a lot of work. We work almost like, I'm not going to quote in hours, but we work a lot to solve some really technical challenges. So um, we work across distributed computing. Um, Android app development, uh, iOS. Uh, we try to solve a lot of compute issues on, on the cloud. You know, optimizing performances of um, the backend systems, uh, reverse proxying the LBs, and uh, of course, go going on to the goal of providing this finished product. Um, so, having said that, um, the rollout question: We're pretty much into one or two cuts of 
uh, this product already into you know staging environments. Uh, we want to get into production by end of this year. Uh, we have done a f you know a demo and you know on, on, on different devices. Of course, we want to make this available on tablets as well as mobile phones as well as web browsers, so that anyone can just open up his mobile phone and then start learning, start learning live. This is going to open up an opportunity not to exist, not just to existing faculty, but even to potential you know prospective wannabe learners or wannabe teachers. Like if all of you are smart students and if you want to really teach somebody, maybe your cousin or your friend, some somebody, you can just schedule a live lecture on and then get into the whole ecosystem of learning. Um, this is also going to reach a lot of different goals of uh, of the country, of digitizing the country, skilling the country quicker. You can't open up physical centers so as quickly as as you can you know open up virtual centers, right? So uh, that's that's you know pretty much what we are trying to solve, and um, we're looking for some bright minds, of course. We're looking for some uh, out of the box thinkers, which uh, we're kind of uh, always you know we love we love challenges and. Uh, IIT Bombay is basically one of the most premium institutions where, where big challenges are taken up. Thanks. Just to add on, on some of the uh, main points uh, is uh, uh, the open edX platform that Rohit talked about. Uh, there has been a great initiative already in place uh, with uh, Professor Patak and uh, his team who have installed an uh, edX based insta installation at uh, IITB and have been using it. So one of the main uh, areas, uh, or, or one of the main reasons for us to come down here is to basically try and collaborate and uh, make it a, a, on a bigger grand scale at where we, like, it's basically the corporate and, uh, and the actual government joining hands together. Very interesting, I think, is very good. So are you talking about the content of um, this uh, program, or you're talking about content of what the product is? I'm talking about what uh, you expect the interns to build. Agreed. So no, like no, no, no. They, no. Can, so, they so, cannot build software. They can build content. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm not, the second yeah. thing uh, which I wanted to point out was, I saw assessments. Okay. As, uh, you were not there when I told them. I belong to IIT. I never attended a single lecture. Okay. One of the very few people. You know Salman Khan? 
Yeah. Not the actor. We know yeah. Khan. He, Khan. We met him personally. Yeah. The Khan Academy. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, we met him. Yeah. We met him. He came to Do our you office. You know what he has yeah. written in his book? That when I joined MIT, mm -hmm. I learned very fast yeah. that I can learn what the professor teaches in 45 minutes, sitting at home in 15 minutes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Which I learned very early before internet. He had the fortunately he had internet. I had books. Okay. Why should I study from a lecturer when the book is better? Obviously, lecturer gives it's a live performance. Book is a package film. Okay. A lot of takes have gone before. Okay. So the content I am talking about is not the con not the education content. Okay. What is weak in the whole world? Okay, is assessment. I don't care. Actually, and no professor should care. I am not a professor, by the way. I worked in TCS for 22 years. They don't allow me to teach because I don't have a PhD. I think I can teach better than most of them. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, that is special about IITN. Okay. He starts with this statement, I can be better than anybody else. The only person they respect is other IITNs. Uh, in one of the presentation earlier, somebody asked me, Aren't you redeveloping the wheel? Okay. Standard question, why are you doing it again? I said, of course I am redeveloping the wheel. Because I, I can do a better wheel than what exists in the world. Why should I not redevelop? Okay. So basically the content I am talking about is not the delivery content. Because for example, take programming. Why should I look at Professor Fatak's videos? There are so many other videos generally available from MIT. I can learn programming from anybody. Okay. So what is, what is going to be special? about education going forward. What is special about education going forward is the assessment. How do I know whether the person knows programming? <coughs> Currently, how, how do they test? Is a good test for programming? All this I is not addressed to you, it's addressed to these people. Okay. Multiple choice questions. My son told me, he was an IITN by the way, he told me in programming test, you start by knowing, or by writing everything that you know first create a good impression, mm -hmm. then you tackle, what if you, even if you don't know the algorithm, write something. By that time, no, no assessor can know whether you have made a mistake or not. So it's not online. Since you have got so many marks, you will get marks anyway. Okay. Assessment is very weak. Assessment by multiple choice questions, which is the vogue right now. Just, just today, 98 percent passing. What kind of an exam is this in 10th and 12th? <laughs> Why are you holding the exam in the first place? Just to identify 1 percent. 98 percent passing is criminal. The exam yeah, is it's horrible. It's ridiculous. Absolutely. Ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. So, so the trend, the trend of weak assessment is there. Okay. Now, assessments, according to me, have to assess the concept. It cannot be by rote. I'll just give you a few examples since, since there is time. Okay. Uh, there are there is something called a mathematics uh, museum or something. Okay, one site like that, and there they give an example of how do they teach mathematics. They said, I write the equation on the board. Okay, five minus three divided by two. That's what he will write. Bracket five minus three slash two. And the students are encouraged to give a story for that. That is the way to teach. Okay. I have five marbles. I gave I, I or I have I had five pedas. I ate three. Remaining I distributed to two friends. This is the story. Now everything becomes clear. Okay. So the assessment could be write a story. Are we are we there yet? We are not. Each and every concept you teach has to be assessed in a manner which is different from what we are doing now. Okay. So you have to, con you had a section called assessments. Okay. Th some By the way, this is, these are just uh, the high level slides. Correct, correct, uh, correct. A lot of your there, questions there, are answered in detail. There is a technical detail. word for it. One is there is, there is assessment levels. Okay. An assessment level where you ask the student to build something from what he has learned is the best. Yeah. We may not reach there, okay. but at least assess concepts. Build is what I told you. Pi minus 3 slash 2, build a story. Yeah. Okay. He may not reach there. And that is where you have to go because that solves your problem of bandwidth. Okay. Sure. The one good thing I heard from you okay, is 4G and mobile. Okay. 
there is some there is a concept called bite size knowledge okay currently we are dealing with courses they have to be broken into pieces okay the whole course you will not survive with a full course let me tell you okay nobody is going to use virtual classrooms to learn programming and get a degree we are not there yet okay i should be able to use your virtual classroom to learn pointers to learn addition to learn something so you need this bite size knowledge and the best way to do that is assessments don't you you need content as well i don't think you don't need the lecture okay lecture is the least because you can learn from anywhere nowadays okay yeah that that is that is basically um, for the a little bit mature people like you know um, after 12th standard or 10th onwards sorry but but sorry. what if, what if so, sorry what if first second third graders first second third is where you have to concentrate you are going the wrong way round and okay. uh, let me complete sir yes, sure. <laughs> i'm not completed what i'm saying is uh, the first to 10th which we call you know k1 to 10th okay these are the people who cannot learn by themselves very easily they need they need a bit assistance they need somebody to give them the right direction or answer the question because they are very curious they child have... is the best learner okay agreed i'm not disagreeing that correct yeah. so you you give professor fatak conducted an, an experiment he had distributed tablets and gave yeah. people prepared to tell them how to use tablet for 2 hours 15 minutes children take to new things very fast absolutely okay. yes ah, so let them let them start learning the new way no but the problem is problems. but the problem is uh, you have lot of kendriya vidyalayas for example lot of kvs kendriya vidyalayas Vidyalay schools uh, cbsc you know the, the government backed uh, schools and they are across the country and Correct. similarly there are many you know government owned uh, schools in rural as well as urban no oh, wait, yeah. wait wait i'll just okay. stop you at that time sure okay don't say there are kvs and there are many other schools kvs are good many other schools are junk yeah, I'm, i'm not even comparing them ah, actually so don't talk, i'm just don't saying talk the number of KVs schools are so them. many the number of schools are so many across the country but the problem is when a kv let's say in a very small town like let's say in latur or nashik or something they have a limited set of teachers and uh, they also want to learn the same curriculum as a mumbai or a pune or, or delhi but that limited set of cur- curriculum and those limited set of teachers aren't giving them the same i am bringing up them up to the same level as a mumbai or delhi uh, kv probably because uh, the KV's teacher ca- kv is uh, addressing that problem they are recording lectures and giving yes, to all exactly, schools exactly yes, exactly so they are they, they are getting virtual but recording lectures again is a problem that is not completely solved because that's again recorded it doesn't give the student a chance to actually talk and ask questions right and uh, and and what the what kvs are doing What KVs are doing? They are calling that teacher See, you from Mumbai. See, you are out of the box. I'll give, tell you out of the box. Yeah. Okay. Who is the best teacher in answering questions? For a fifth standard student, the best teacher is a sixth standard uh, kid. Correct. Not mm-hmm. not white haired and yeah. this thing because he knows how to teach. He know, talks that language. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you need something called a mentor. You don't Correct. want a teacher. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the whole teacher if. that is one of the projects which i tried earlier right. and i will try it sometime. this is a social kind of a uh, teaching i would call it a social yeah, teaching yeah correct right? exactly yeah. i'll take up three points from the discussion that uh, we have been having uh, number 1 we need to concentrate on the schooling in the k12 section so that we want to have the better engineers in future e4 yeah <laughs> well, it, a4 is easy to build agree agree okay as a swimmer as a swimmer so you can just you, you can just imagine how swimming. difficult this problem is to be solved in the country no, it, it is, is if you forget the how the difficult the problem is okay and not it, technologically <laughs> it is impossible for people to realize that there is a problem exactly because yeah. people like you come and say you have to start at the top these people don't need any aid they are already educated okay they go to coursera they go to udacity they exactly. don't realize you they will use your technology that's okay bandwidth mm. okay so let the world handle the there are only 14% of our stu- students go beyond 12 okay these are those 14% the 86% who are spoiled for life <laughs> because you because of this and i'll tell you kids will take to technology much faster than these and once you start a first year old get him addicted to machines machine learning he will learn, you do, doesn't need any teacher yeah. internet is there somewhere you give him re- your reliance jio with a 4g he will learn you said uh, learning na human being child is the weakest uh, animal in the world mm-hmm. he learns how to open his eyes he learns to do pattern recognition at a very high level okay 
was by in first five years building the cells and next three years using them. Okay. Most of the learning happens in the childhood. Okay. Yeah. And you start that self learning. You were not there earlier. You that inquisitive attitude. I think we kill children. Okay. The childish inquisitiveness, childish curiosity. Okay, is killed. That's why I said. Fortunately, I have. I was. My parents taught me to ask questions. Okay. I did not go to school for three years. Third year, I joined school. I was. I was. I removed myself from three schools in first first standard because I was told not to obey teachers. One one school I went for three days. My, both my parents were teachers. Fortunately, so they could manage that. We are just killing the children. Are very curious. They want to learn. Even a dumb child want, learns his mother tongue. Nobody teaches him. Automatically, so don't talk about children not learning. Allow them to learn. Make access open. Don't don't ram knowledge into their head. Make uh, give them in a full uh, store full of toys. They will pick up toys and play. Okay. Yeah, certainly. Out of the box. Yeah. So, just again tapping onto what you are saying as such, right? When you say that we want to learn, right? You got to have and. Platform available for them to learn, right? It is not just keeping a, a kid into an area and having him build him by himself, right? He will need to. So the second point that one was start early in your in your life, basically whether it is K four or K twelve, whatever you want to classify it, start early. Don't start at graduation. Basically. The second point I caught from your discussion is collaborate. Okay, don't rely on one person to do all your teaching. Which is whether he is your teacher, whether he is your parent, or whether he is your colleague at work. Okay, don't rely on one person to do any of uh, your learning experience. Collaborate and get the most out of it. Whether it is a pointer knowledge that you want to try and learn, you learn what your colleague learned in uh, in by making the group discussions out of it, by making mingling around the students, by making it fun. Basically, try and make it. Collaboration is the second point. And the third point is content is moot. Basically, content is not the physical or the or the physical videos or anything of that sort. It's actually live information. The information that you are actually doing on the on the go. That is what is more important, rather than doing it in a pre-recorded in a classroom environment or anything of that sort. Right. One of the ask, yeah. other points that you brought out that it has to be packet sized and uh, like one two weeks of learning and four weeks or six weeks of delivery. Right. So on the same point, we have actually listed out projects on the same way. We we didn't even bring up, and we wanted to actually concentrate on the projects on what an individual. It's a specific input, transfer function, specific output, right? So the, based on the specific output, the output is decided within six to eight weeks. These are the items that will be required for people to of any of uh, the sorts to bring out the information. Okay, and use it out, and we are already in conjunction with Dr. with uh, Professor Patak to have this collaboration going on. Yeah, then it becomes next year. Yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> it's not uh, uh, today or tomorrow or anything of that sort. It's just, just the thing is, we wanted to have this platform. What we are doing, bring up the discussion forum and try and understand. One or the two points that uh, has come out more, more vocally and clear is concentrated more on assessments. Which probably has not been understood in any of our previous uh, researches or anything of that sort. We will have to lay, have a more look into it. You are you are talking to teachers. Everybody wants to say, "My mug on the this thing, and I will teach best." Mm -hmm. It's fine. I have no problem. But there are so many teachers. Anyways, uh, thanks for the time here. Thank you guys.